afternoon, parents, family members, and supporters of future CMU Chippewas, and welcome to Central Michigan University's Virtual Fire Up Friday. Here at CMU, we like to recognize the diverse nature of our supporters, family members, and parents. And so throughout this presentation, you'll hear these terms used synonymously. My name is Kayla Harbor Bates, and I am the Assistant Director of Undergraduate Admissions at Central Michigan University. Not only do I have the pleasure of working for this fine institution, but I am also a very proud and very fired up two-time graduate of CMU. The Office of Undergraduate Admissions would like to thank you all for tuning in today, where we will take the time out to talk about supporting new families in the transition process to CMU. During the entirety of this live stream, feel free to post your questions that you may have in the comments section below. I will have my fellow admissions colleagues, Patricia Young, Mary Witherspoon, and Jill Irving, as well as Alicia Norman from Housing and Holly Renicky from University Communications. They will all be in the comments section to provide answers to, to your questions. Additionally, there will be a question and answer section towards the end of today's, today's presentation for these individuals here on the screen. Our goal is to get all of your questions answered and to get you and your students fired up as we bring CMU into your home virtually. We wanna get started here though with the, um, with the program and just acknowledge that um, this has been a hard time for all of us. This has been a unique and challenging time and we've all been impacted by the pandemic in one way or another. Um, this is not the way we expected our um, Fire Friday to go. We didn't know we were gonna be virtual, but here we are, right? Um, we'd rather be in person. We've got a beautiful campus. This time of year, it looks great. And we've got friendly people that are studying here and working here and teaching here. Um, in these uncertain times, stay home, stay safe means we needed to reimagine the way this looks like. Fire Friday has been changed as well as new student orientation. We wanted to showcase our nationally ranked institution and our diverse student population. So we've created what we think is something really special for our students and at each orientation, I think your students are gonna really be treated to um, some really interesting, great programming in real time, which we thought was so important. So in these uncertain times, there is really something you can count on. Your university is gonna be here for you. And CMU has a can-do initiative and we are committed to not raising undergraduate tuition for our students. We're gonna be offering deferred payment options for tuition, fees, and room and board. And we're looking into more need-based aid than ever. We're also restructuring those merit scholarships that so many of our students are using and being real flexible with those so that the, the money can stay in the hands of the students who need it. And we wanna keep our students here on campus. And we know jobs help pay for college for students and we wanna increase those opportunities. You heard President Davies say it, and if you didn't, I will share it. He said, every first year student is guaranteed a job on campus um, if they want one. So those are all good things to look forward to. Now, Noah, can you tell us a little bit more about what makes the transition to CMU so special? Yeah, thanks, Lori. Um, so when I think back of four years ago when I set out and transitioned to Central Michigan University, that transition was really special. But you're probably wondering what makes it so special. You know, that transition really starts that moment your student received their admission letter. And then from there, the university has intentionally designed some points in your students' onboarding experience that's gonna assist them to make that transition pretty successful. So Alex, maybe you could share what makes that experience so special. Absolutely, Noah. It starts with our incredible and welcoming admissions team. Since August and September of 2019, they've been helping you all, families and supporters, as well as your students to get their bearings, to figure out what options exist at Central Michigan University. All throughout the spring, the Office of Admissions has been hosting Fire Up Fridays. Even uh, when the global pandemic hit, um, they switched to the virtual format. Uh, and so of course today is part of that onboarding experience. We are a really strong uh, university of communicators. And so we um, really think that these are really important touch points for you, your students, and uh, getting, getting a sense of what's next is really, really important. 
the very first required element of the student onboarding experience is new student orientation. And because of our current moment and our challenges facing our communities, um, we have moved our new student orientation to a virtual format. So we are well prepared to help onboard you and your student to know their academic requirements, to get a good sense of what campus life is like, and uh, really make sure that you can keep the momentum going. There's so much excitement um, for becoming a Central Michigan University student, and we are well prepared to help you on that pathway. So the majority of our presentation, we're gonna be talking about new student orientation in the virtual format, but we also wanna not forget about all the other touch points that we have along the way. And two of those are not required experiences, but they're strongly encouraged, Impact and Leadership Safari. Noah is very familiar with both of these programs. So Noah, what do you know about Impact and Leadership Safari? Yeah, like Alex said, I'm very familiar with both these programs, um, but I'll start with IMPACT. So IMPACT is a mentoring program that's designed to help your student in their collegiate transition. IMPACT is designed to uh, help students with from underrepresented backgrounds get acclimated to the campus. It's highly encouraged for multicultural advancement in Lloyd Cooper Scholars or Mac Scholars for short. I myself have been an IMPACT participant, so when I went through IMPACT four years ago, I actually went through the very first impact and from there it has grown so much. I was able to engage in some interactive workshops and small group discussions and that really helped me become familiar with the university and the people that are here. Then from there I transitioned to Leadership Safari which follows impact and this is a conference that takes place in the fall where your student gets to meet incoming students just like themselves. Think of this as almost an extended orientation where your students going to continue, continue to get to know the campus but this time they're gonna be able to hear from, from some world renowned speakers and participate in some team building activities as well as um, embrace some diverse experiences and then the all important build their leadership skills. So both programs were influential and really helped within my transition to the university um, and are highly encouraged like Alex said, but not required. So I'm gonna turn it back over to Alex and he'll have some touch points on new student convocation. Well said Noah, and we are really proud of that that uh, program offering um, centered in mentorship and leadership development. Um, the next required element of your new student's journey is new student convocation. So this is a formal academic program and the formal introduction and kickoff to the academic year. So your students are gonna hear from our president, our provost, um, and, a, and definitely some uh, key alumni leaders um, to really formally welcome and formally kick off the academic school year. So it's a really incredible program that your students will get to participate in. Following, immediately following new student convocation, students are required to complete what we call Campus Life 101, which you can kind of think of as Campus Life Orientation. We're all the way into August at this point with Campus Life 101, just before school starts. And this is where students are gonna learn about campus safety, how to stay safe, um, how to develop healthy relationships with their peers, and of course, um, navigating difference, navigating diversity and inclusion. So um, we're really proud of that program offering with Campus Life 101. And so that, that's really the, the uh, initial kickoff to the school year. And then of course, your first day of class. And if that wasn't enough, this entire onboarding experience, Central Michigan University also offers Central Welcome, which is the entire first month that your student is at Central Michigan University. We try to help them navigate all the incredible opportunities and learn about all of our departments and resources. And we help them um, make connections with one another, with faculty and staff through Central Welcome. So as you can see, our onboarding experience, it's not just the one day uh, orientation now in its virtual format, but really it's an entire process. It's an onboarding experience and especially as we've moved to the virtual, um, all of our offices, all of our departments are available um, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday to serve you and your students. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. So I'm going to hand it over to Lori, who's going to um, kick us off and sharing a little bit more about what virtual orientation looks like. Thank you, Alex. Yes, we've been working really hard and really being innovative and adaptive to really um, come up with a strategic program for our incoming freshmen who deserve it. They really do. So this program has been developed to serve really as your, um, your uh, 
formal introduction here, but um, we also wanted you to know that because of the new mandates to the health and safety, that um, virtual orientation is going to continue all the way through August 7th. Um, we really want our to keep the momentum going for our students. And we really want them to learn all things CMU just as quick as possible. Um, we thought it was real important to keep it consistent in terms of the date that we promised our students. We wanted to offer the same date uh, virtually as they were promised um, live. And we also wanted to um, make sure that everyone knows that they're gonna need some access to Wi-Fi and some smart devices to be able to participate into this program. And you probably wanna take some time to test those before you're date. Um, you will receive an email one week out with all the information that you need. So really all you need to do is sit tight and wait for that information to come. Again, the program that we've developed really is going to serve as your formal introduction to all the information that you need to have a successful student experience here at CMU. So we highly, highly um, you know, recommend it and encourage it. In fact, we make it mandatory. Um, but we wanted you to know that you're going to get some general information that everyone is going to need, uh, but you're also going to get some really unique personalized information that's going to relate to your student's unique area of interest. So there's going to be some opportunities in real time to make some personal connections with our fantastic faculty and staff and even some of our orientation mentors who are you know just a few years down the road and are really looking forward to do some um, mentoring with your students so there's some really unique special networking opportunities um, and we're also going to introduce your student to the resources that are on campus and most important, let's not forget, everyone is interested in that schedule. So we are going to, um, during orientation, draft your schedule actually for the whole year this time. So we're really excited about that. In addition, you're gonna have some appointments that are gonna be at that day, some one-on-one -on -one appointments with advising, and there are even gonna be opportunities to meet one-on-one -on -one, um, throughout the summer. So the, how the day looks, let's start there. The day is gonna begin promptly at 9 a.m. So again, please have your student test their Wi-Fi connections and their smart devices so that we can start promptly at nine. Uh, we've got a, a, a nice program that's ready to go to welcome your student and it's gonna be a welcome and an overview of campus life. There's gonna be the, uh, those mentor students that I referred to that are sharing stories of, actual stories of their life experiences on campus. At 10 a.m., we're gonna break off into those academic interest areas, which again are those unique paths to graduation that your students are gonna um, be interested in that really tell the story of what their next four years are gonna look like. Other three um, requirements are gonna be um, to go through some pre-recorded academic program um, information and attend mentor office hours to gain that good social modeling and that networking time. And then of course, the one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment that every student is looking forward to because at the end of it, they're gonna have their, um, their roadmap to success and their, uh, their uh, class schedule. Then we have some encouraged opportunities after that mandatory um, orientation session. And these are going to be um, after the following the live portion, which ends at 11 a.m. These unique one-on-one -on -one opportunities are going to be additional connection points that are with our partner offices that will be with answering all of your important questions and, and the information that you need to get started here. So career coaching sessions will be available, financial planning and consultation uh, through, their, through our um, our support services here. There's gonna be residence life appointments, there's student employment um, availabilities, as well as those really encouraged student mentor chat so that students can meet with some Chippewas who've already been here for a couple of years. There'll also be success coaching appointments for those that wanna get going on successful strategies as well. So don't forget there's virtual tours online and some pre-recorded sessions as well as our YouTube channel that can be utilized. Then we've got exploring our academic programs, which we do have two over 200 undergraduate programs and more than 70 uh, graduate programs in our six undergraduate uh, colleges. And we are assuming that your students are gonna get to know at least one of these colleges real well when they determine their major and maybe their minor will take them into another college, but all of our majors and minors are housed within these six um, academic um, colleges. So we do encourage first year 
exploration. There'll be lots of opportunities to meet with faculty and professionals to really do some exploring. And that's what we want for our first year uh, freshmen is to really see what all there is out there and make a good connection with something that's really interesting to them. All right, Betty, what does um, CMU have to offer to support our supporters? Parents and family members are central to student success. Your student will look to you for advice throughout their four years at CMU. You can help them in their academic and social life at the university. As parents and supporters, you're able to attain, obtain assistance throughout your student's time on campus by connecting with parent and family services. I have a wonderful job working with an outstanding faculty and staff who serves the needs of your students, but I'm here specifically to serve the needs of parents and supporters. I want you to call me, email me, text me with any questions or concerns you have. Since I've worked at CMU for a lifetime, I probably know the answers to many of your questions. But if you stop me, I promise to get you in touch with the right resource. We have a website that features our parent and family guide, which is a book of frequently asked questions by parents and supporters. There are also many resources, telephone numbers, and offices and important dates listed on the site. We'll also send you monthly electronic newsletters to keep you informed. CMU invites you to attend Family and Friends Weekend on September 26th and 27th. We will have a variety of activities taking place on campus that weekend or virtually if health situations mandate that. So parents and supporters are automatically part of our parent and family association. As a part of that association, you can also opt to be a gold member. To do that, you need to make a $40 donation to the Alumni Association. The funds are used to support student scholarships and the Student Food Pantry and CMU Student Emergency Fund. There are also many benefits that come with the gold card. You'll receive 20% off clothing or merchandise at the CMU bookstore. You'll also receive two tickets to a CMU athletic event of your choice. Discounts at hotels, theme parks, concerts, car rentals, and more. You'll receive Centralite, the alumni magazine, and become closely associated with what is now your university. Noah, back to you. Thanks, Betty, for all that very important information. Um, I'm going to kind of transition into talking about, you know, how do we get your student's journey started? We would love for you to encourage your student to register for orientation at the end of today's Fire Up Friday program. And, you know, we recognize that the majority of you have a student who's already committed to the university, and that is fantastic. But if your student is still exploring their options, we're going to encourage you to really take that leap and I'm gonna go over some steps for you and your student to do so. So first with that is visiting our orientation website. So you can visit www.cmich.edu slash orientation. And there's a great deal of information for you all to go through if, if you would like. Next is pay or defer the enrollment deposit. Then we're gonna to move to complete your academic interest profile, select your orientation date, and then when you do that, make sure you're registering your family members as well. So speaking of orientation dates, displayed on the screen are the new student orientation dates that your student can choose from. They only need to pick one date and they can do so by visiting that same website. So that www.cmich.edu slash orientation. And they can do that to reserve their orientation date. We are also offering late June and July opportunities for transfer and freshman sessions if that is needed. So you may be asking, what is there for me to learn? What, what can I do? Well, hopefully you're excited to learn that the Friday of your student's orientation week, as we have created something very special called Family Friday, and that's just for you all. Now, this is not to be confused with this Fire Up Friday and other Fire Up Fridays in the future. 
I know the names can be pretty similar, but Family Friday, because it's truly all about you. So you will have the opportunity to learn about CMU resources and ways in which you can become a successful supporter of a successful CMU student. And then at the end of these, um, there's gonna be optional opportunities for you to engage with some of our family team mentors, which are current students here at the university. And they're gonna share some of their personal ex experiences of their life at CMU, maybe the things that they've been involved in and how they transitioned to the university. So displayed on the screen are the specific dates for family members and supporters. How this is going to work is at the end of each of our orientation weeks, these Family Friday sessions will provide helpful information in areas such as finances, your student's university academics, residence life, as well as campus safety. So this live event is gonna take place each Friday during the lunch hour. So between noon and one o'clock. And this can be accessed through a personal email that's gonna be sent to you each week um, to the parents and supporters of our freshman incoming class. We hope that you're gonna take advantage of this opportunity because it truly is a special program where you all will be able to gain insight and resources to help support your student during their transition to the university and beyond. So we hope that you mark your calendars now for this design experience because we're super excited about it. Hey, Lori, maybe you can tell us about what they can do or a student can do if they're already registered for orientation. I sure can, happy to do that. There are a few housekeeping items that will, um, will still need to be attended to after you have registered for orientation. We do want you, like I've asked before, to keep checking your CMESH, newly set up CMESH email. That's where you're gonna be getting all of these, these invitations and you'll find the links to um, these orientations and this, this Family Friday. So make sure you're checking those and parents encourage those students to do that. Sometimes they need little reminders. Um, also, you can follow up on your FAST and financial aid. Just know that all of our offices are open. We have been, we haven't missed a beat since we have, you can see we're in our homes, but we're still answering the phones and still answering your questions. And we still want to be here for you because we know you've got questions and we've got answers. So keep calling those offices um, as you find them on, on the website and keep connecting with our partner offices to get your questions answered. We also want you to start thinking about um, getting accommodations if that's appropriate for your student through Student Disability Services. This is the perfect time to be set that up and also remember that those high school those final high school transcripts need to be sent on to the university um, as soon as possible we understand that some of those buildings are closed most high school buildings are closed and we promise to be real flexible with that but that is one additional housekeeping item that's all i have with that what is who's next let me there we go alex is next Perfect, Lori. Thanks so much. And um, we already have a question that came in, so I'll go ahead and answer it. So the question was, um, can I attend my virtual orientation with my student? And the answer is absolutely yes. That is why we're offering the Fire Up Friday on, uh, I'm sorry, the Family Friday program on Fridays is because we understand that uh, many of us are on stay-at-home orders, especially if you are in the state of Michigan. And so we want you to know that you're welcome to attend uh, virtually the new student orientation with your student. Again, that's the 9 to 11 a.m. block of time. Your student's going to receive a unique link to access that information one week prior to their orientation date. That first hour, as Lori discussed, is really an overview of the university. We're going to cover five steps to student success. In their second meeting, they'll enter a smaller virtual space which is staffed by an academic advisor and two student orientation mentors. Again, you're welcome to be in the room, be with your student. Um, I know some uh, parents and supporters will probably tune into the first half and then because the student will be able to unmute and chat in a virtual space with their new peers, um, maybe, maybe the second half is where we'll see some of our parents and supporters um, give their students that space. Of course, we encourage that. Additionally, your student's gonna receive their um, unique link to their one-on-one -on -one academic advising appointment. Now, most of those academic advising appointments are gonna happen on the same date as your student's reserved orientation date. Now, we definitely, uh, you're allowed to, we, will, we cannot tell you you can't attend those academic advising appointments, 
But we definitely think that it's important that your student starts taking that responsibility and learning and, um, and having that ownership over their educational experience. So um, we know that um, it, it might be tempting to want to um, try to do things for your student, but we definitely want you to um, trust your student and help coach your student. You are always welcome to follow up with faculty and staff on campus um, if there are clarifying questions, but um, we always encourage you to um, teach your student to empower themselves with that. So a couple of the other main um, frequently asked questions that we get, um, do I have to, or does my student have to attend a virtual orientation session? The answer is no, of course, we're not gonna make anyone do anything that they don't want to do, but we highly, highly encourage it because it, as Lori so eloquently stated, it allows you to keep your momentum going. We want your student to be able to keep generating that excitement for their future. Our present moment, it's really challenging. It's unfortunate. Um, there's a lot of pain. There's a lot of frustration right now. And so to be able to have um, an opportunity for your student to dream about their future here at Central Michigan University, and not just dream about it, but to get it started and to enroll in courses, um, that's what we, we hope to do and accomplish on your virtual orientation date. And then of course, invite you and your families back to campus once it's safe to do so. So how long is the orientation day? As I mentioned, it's nine until 11 a.m. There's a whole bunch of self-paced opportunities. And um, of course you have your academic, your student has their academic advising appointment. If you need to change your date, if um, something has come up, even the day of, you're welcome to call our main line. There's the number there on the screen. Um, and just go ahead and call us and let us know that you'd like to attend a different virtual orientation date. Now, another question we get is how do we prepare for this? My student is feeling anxious. Do they have to pick out their classes? Um, what do they need to know for their orientation date? And those are all really, really good questions. And you as their supporter are trying to figure out how do I parent and support a student who's making that important transition to college. The first advice that I would have is definitely to do a little tech check. So on our website, cmich.edu slash orientation, you can click onto our frequently asked questions page. And actually you can test WebEx. Um, Cisco WebEx is the platform uh, through which all of our virtual orientation experiences, including the Family Fridays program will be hosted on. So test your devices, make sure your sound works. Um, prior to the orientation date using the link and the instructions there on our website. Additionally, we have a whole bunch of virtual resources on our website and it doesn't hurt to start to peruse those. The first is our Money Matters Guide. This is all things billing and financial aid related wrapped up into a really nice concise guide. And so we've got important information on there for you and your students. Additionally, we have the New Student Handbook. This is everything your new student needs to know as they begin their journey at Central Michigan University. That's also hosted on our website as an e-magazine. And last but not least, we have our Mount Pleasant Visitors Guide. Families and supporters, you are now not only members of the Central Michigan University community, but every time you come visit campus, you're gonna to get to visit our really beautiful little town and go check it out, go to the parks, go um, visit our really unique local restaurants. And so get a sneak peek at what Mount Pleasant has to offer with our visitor's guide. Additionally, before orientation, you might consider encouraging your student to download our new student orientation mobile application. All of those virtual resources that I just discussed, including a whole listing of departments and websites and emails and phone numbers are all in one place at your fingertips. It's a free application, so it doesn't cost anything to download. You can use it on Android or Apple devices. So there's the link there, and we'll also post that in the chat. So that mobile application, the great thing about that is your student can carry that with them quite literally on their person all the way throughout the academic year. And that way they're not having to pull up. We all know that pain of pulling up the websites on our phone and trying to navigate websites on the phone. So this is a really nice resource for your uh, student and for you. You're welcome to download the application as well. So I want to uh, make use of our incredible plant panel today um, and ask them for um, their advice for you supporters and parents about how you can help your student make the most of their transition. So Noah, when you are in the shoes of an incoming student, um, what was helpful for you? What would you give? What kind of advice would you give to a parent who is helping a, a student here um, transition into the university? Mm. 
Yeah, that's a really great question, Alex. Um, I think when I think back on my freshman year and transitioning to the university, it as much as it was a big transition for me, it was also a really big, big transition for my supporters. You know, my siblings always saw me around all the time and now I'm moving away and you know, my parents always had being used to my presence and now I'm in a different city than them. Um, it was just a big adjustment. And so I think one of the ways that really helped within my transition and some advice I would offer is essentially, you know, checking in with your student and, and really just having a conversation of seeing how are you doing, you know, how are your classes going? Have you joined an organization? Are you getting involved? Like all those types of things. And as much as it may seem like that might not be an area that your student's interested in having you do. Um, and it's not, I wouldn't consider it micromanaging. It's really just being that you showing your student that you still care and that they have a place still back at home. And um, I think that was really helpful and beneficial when I transitioned to the university was having that support system of, of family back home and my community just checking in on me and making sure that I was doing well. So never losing touch is probably one of my biggest pieces of advice. Oh man, that's a really good piece of advice, Noah. That communication is critical for your student's success. You've helped your student get to this point of being a successful high school student, or if their student is a transfer student, um, getting that uh, really important um, advice from you. Even if you yourself did not attend college, you've helped your student all throughout their journey. And you're an important piece of the, the puzzle of success uh, to earn that college degree. And we want you to make sure that you know keeping up that communication with your student, um, even when it sounds like, or might feel like um, you're being a bother, hear it from Noah, uh, he, he gave you permission to contact your student and reach out and um, you know make sure that they're doing okay. It's really important. So Lori, um, you are a success coach on our campus. So your job is literally to help students set goals, help them achieve their dreams. And you yourself have been a proud parent of some really successful students. So what advice would you give our parents and supporters as they're navigating this transition? Yeah, I, I do have some advice for parents. I would say really normalize the struggle for your students in homesickness. Just in, acknowledge it and label and let them know it's part of an expectation of going off to, to university, going off to a college campus. Even if you're just five minutes down the road, or maybe you're two and a half hours down the road, but really recognize there are going to be some pains involved in the growth that comes from, from splitting off and, and charting a new path on campus. And in that, encourage them to stay on campus for some of those first few weekends. Hopefully there'll be lots of exciting things that they can participate in on campus. And that's really the time for them to forge those really important um, relationships that are going to really get them through the next four years. So for them being on campus during those first few weekends and not rushing home because they're homesick, it's going to be really important. Now, the other part of that is you may want to come up and visit them because you just coming up for the afternoon and letting them kind of show you around and introduce you to their friends, that's going to be a real important part of it too. So just normalize it, but just recognize it just because your student is calling and they're homesick doesn't mean they're not meant to be here or this isn't working out. It's just part of the process. Uh, that's a really great advice, Lori. And I have really fond memories myself of my folks coming into town when I was in college and introducing them to my new friends. And it's such a special opportunity um, to have our, our families come and be a part of Central Michigan University too. Um, you're just as much a part of this as your student is. You just don't have to attend class. So you've got that um, benefit of being able to take advantage of all the things CMU has to offer, um, our arts, our wonderful um, city of Mount Pleasant. Um, so I'm gonna turn it over to Betty Wagner. So Betty, as you know, is our fearless leader um, for all things parent and family services. And uh, as we know, Betty has served um, students and their supporters for many years. So Betty, I'm sure you've got some really sage advice. What would you, what would you say to our parents and supporters today on the Facebook? I would tell parents and family members to learn as much about CMU resources as you possibly can. Your student is still going to look to you for advice. So when they call home with that problem, 
you'll be able to refer them to some of our resources. You wanna do this before little problems become big problems. And you wanna empower your student to solve their own problems. As tempting as it is to jump in and solve the issue for your student, you're doing them a disservice if you handle it. This is their time to become young adults and allowing them that autonomy is really important. Oh, that's incredible advice, Betty. Thank you so much for that. And I know that the chat has been, uh, been active and I see Kayla smiling, so that must mean we have some questions. So Kayla, what questions do our parents and supporters have this afternoon? Thank you, Alex. Uh, you all have been firing off questions in the chat as Alex mentioned. So we are excited to go ahead and bring your questions forward. And if you do have any additional questions, now is the time to ask them. Go ahead and put them in the comment section below. All right, our first question is from Michelle Van Armen, um, who asks, can you attend more than one session? Alex. So I'll, I'll, I'll take that one. Um, great question, Michelle. So um, your student has one orientation date um, that they'll attend and then they'll have their academic advising appointment. Um, if at any point you think your student needs more information or you'd like your student to sit in on another one, by all means, I think that's a really um, definitely something that we're open to. As far as our Family Friday events, those are specific to each week. So if your student is attending on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday, you're gonna be associated with that uh, Family Friday event on that Friday. We will have a pre-recorded uh, session for you. Actually, we have a, a, a few, more than a few, um, pre-recorded sessions on our virtual orientation homepage, specifically for uh, parents and supporters. So absolutely, um, you, can, you can technically attend more than one session, but my advice would be if you are thinking that you need more information or specific information um, regarding residence life, or perhaps it's financial aid and billing, um, get in touch with us so that we can get you connected to the right resource. Thank you so much for that. Our next question comes from Robert Clark, who asks, our daughter selected her orientation day as 610. Will this be changing? The answer is no. So your uh, student's orientation date that they registered for, uh, for the in-person experience is the same exact date um, as their virtual experience now. So your student will receive um, more information specific to how to log in and all of that one week prior to their date. So um, definitely a great question. And like I said, we're, we're trying to keep the momentum going. We realize that a lot of your students have felt disappointment after disappointment no last softball season, no prom, no graduation ceremony. So we wanted to make sure that we met you and your student where you are right on that day that you selected. So, um, and that's in your home. So we were, we're excited to be able to, to join you in that virtual format. Thank you. All right, and our next question comes from um, Mary O'Toole who asks, what was the name uh, for the app, the orientation app? Noah, what's the name of that app? Can you tell us? Yeah, great question, Mary. Um, so the name of that app is called Guidebook. And so you can download that in your app store. And then once you open up that, that um, application, then you'll wanna search for new student orientation. Um, and this will be able to pull up CMU's new student, student orientation. And this has a plethora of resources to keep you updated on uh, all things CMU, but then also if you have any questions and you want to reach out to a specific office, you can also click on their link within that app. So yep, called Guidebook, and you'll just search new student orientation. Perfect. All right. So I think those are all the questions that are coming through. Parents, again, feel free to continue to ask questions. We do have um, many people in the chat box that are able to answer those questions for you but we are going to begin to wrap things up. Um, so if you do have any questions, feel free to contact any of our offices. You can contact New Student Orientation for questions about virtual orientation. You can contact the Office of Residence Life for questions about housing. 
you can contact the Office of Undergraduate Admissions for questions about admissions as well as financial aid for any of your questions regarding that. All of our offices are open 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Again, all of our offices offer many virtual opportunities to connect with you all via phone, via website, via email. So know that we are here to support you throughout this time to answer all of those questions that you may have. Um, just a little update for our next Fire Up Fridays. We will be back in the student page, parents, where we will feature our study abroad office as well as our alternative break programs. And then on May 29th and June 5th, we will feature living and learning communities for your students. So we have some really exciting Fire Up Fridays coming your way. Again, we will be back in the student page, but you are more than welcome to join and watch with your students. Uh, but make sure your students join in for that great information. Parents, supporters, family members, thank you all so much for joining us today. You all have been great. You've asked us amazing questions. Remember, we are here for you. We are a CMU family and we are happy to have you a part of that family as well. So take care, stay safe and fire up chips. Bye.